and we'll go from there. So welcome everybody back to Discrete Math, and today we're going to be talking about Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra. It's named after a guy named Charles Boole, 19th century, early 19th century, who was just working who was working with just, I don't know, we'll play with some kind of logic games, because that was just kind of like parlor games at the time. Not knowing that the thing that he was developing, which would be much better developed after him, most of these people, they introduce the topic, and they get some basic guidelines on there, and then more mathematicians and people pile on afterwards, and they straighten up the theory, and they extend it. And so we call it Boolean algebra, but I mean, Fool is actually responsible, maybe maybe just like the top 10% of it, and not even the most fundamental things, okay? So amongst the people that added into Boolean algebra was a guy named De Morgan, and De Morgan developed these laws, and these laws, interestingly enough, apply more than just to Boolean algebras. They also apply to sets, and these things all translate directly into set theory, just replacing the little a and b here, which take, which are just Boolean variables, or atoms, if you will, depending on, on the structure we want to plus it into. But the a and b that you're seeing here, the atoms, the elements, the variables, the Boolean variables, can take on two values, true or false. And the plus is or, and the bar across the expression is a not, and the times, which is generally when you're writing, when you're actually doing Boolean algebra, that's generally done implicitly. So I'd write A bar, B bar without a dot between them. I'm writing it explicitly here so I can show you the duality between these two, okay? And so in particular, these two are, du are dual. And so let me show you this. Okay, and De Morgan gave us this one of these first duality laws. This is duality. This has to do with duality. And in particular, I want you to see where, I mean, not goes to not, but the plus goes to a times, yes? And the times goes to plus, and we can work it back or forth. And so you can see that these are really the same laws. These are both the same laws. Plus is in, plus goes to times, times goes to plus. And under that transformation, we say that, you know, the operations addition and multiplication under a Boolean algebra create as a duality. And we end up with dual laws. Every time we write one statement, we can rewrite it, just replacing every plus with a times, every times with a plus. Okay? Now, I said to you guys I was just going to try to plug those in for a couple of things, a couple of values rather than proving it entirely. And then upon rethinking it, I decided, no, no. If we're going to do this, let's do it right. I'm not going to show you all of Boolean algebra, but I am going to prove to you that, Dooling, Boolean, that De Morgan's laws are true, and we're going to do this exhaustively using truth tables. How many of you guys have heard of truth tables? Oh, and Winter, I'm seeing you at one bar. Winter, are you are you are you um, hearing me? Winter, can you hear me? Winter, can you hear me? Because I can see you're having some issues. Oh, you're back. Okay, I'm seeing you're back to two bars. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Oh, you remember I lost my connection yesterday during the middle of the during the middle of our Calc One lecture, right? And then I actually watched the entire recording. I usually, if I, I usually watch a little bits of every le every lecture and recording. And you're in a rural area, okay? Um, yeah. And I generally watch a little bit of lecture from every recording. And um, it was kind of interesting because I was able to watch later and watch the chat, and it was clear I was asked, I didn't think people could hear me. Because I thought I was in that reconnecting mode, and so if I was reconnecting, then you wouldn't be able to hear me. And it was clear, even while I was talking, even though I thought that you couldn't hear me, people could hear me. And they were telling me this in the chat, but my chat was just stopped. And so I never saw any of those messages until I saw the recording. Because when I did reconnect and rejoin, all the old chat messages went away. 
And so I didn't see until I saw the recording that people were trying to tell me. And then I think it was DR saying, hey, dude, he doesn't know we can hear him. <laughs> and that was it. And I'd also, at the time, I want to check it right there. You didn't actually lose the slide view that I was sharing. I lost the slide view and thought that had been lost in the classroom. And that's why I stopped and say, oh, what this is terrible thing. And let me go ahead and reconnect it. And I'm sure people are saying, what is he talking about? But for my view, I thought that he had lost the slide view that you're seeing right now. And so I had to go back and reshare it. And apparently that wasn't the case. <laughs> so here we are. So again, now we're going to do the truth tables now. And we're going to do the truth tables by taking the expressions that you see here and applying them to each of the terms one piece at a time until I can come up with a truth value. How many of you guys have seen truth tables before? How many of you guys have seen truth tables before? Absolutely, Ramsey. And the Boolean variables that you use in programming, this is one of the reasons why I'm covering this. And on top of that, you talk about it in programming. Yes, it's in pro around true and false. Yes, and it's not just pro programming right there, because these statements you can you, you can set up boolean um, <clears throat> boolean expressions that will give you just decimal arithmetic. That will create decimal arithmetic, and then you can hardwire that because every boolean expression comes down to ors, ands, and nots, and you can set up transistors in hardware that do things and so the the if you ever work with ramsey have you work with assembly language at all have you worked with assembly language have you, have you heard of assembly language assembly language because when you're doing programming you'll do it generally in a higher level language and then what will happen is you'll take those expressions that you did yes it's called coding this is all coding from your point of view it's programming coding okay Coding has other meanings, but yeah. Um, and what happens is you actually have, you just didn't know it. Because what happens if you're doing any programming at all, you do it in some uh, name a language that you programmed in. So I can use one of your references. Name a language that you've programmed in. I have probably taught it. C++, Java, yes. How many of you guys heard of Lisp, Snowball, PL1, Python? Yeah, I've taught that. Um, Fortran, Pascal, yeah, any of those? Okay, yeah, so those are all examples of programming languages that people often learn. Yeah, and what happens, yes, the compilers turns into machine language, machine language is assembler. And the thing about assembler, that machine language is every instruction in machine language translates directly to a hardware instruction. And those hardware instructions are implemented using transistors, NAND gates generally, in your computer on the actual chip, right? And what you're doing is you're applying, once it's been translated back to machine language, the slash assembler, and you can actually program in machine language if you wanted to get something done really, really, really efficiently. For example, when I was working with a, uh, I, had a I had a grant and I was a, a participant in the supercomputer workshop, uh, the workshop for scientific supercomputing. When I worked with the National Center for Supercomputer Applications out of Champaign-Urbana, with grant money from a whole bunch of three-letter agencies, which bought me time and allowed me a time on uh, NSA devices, National Security Agency and CIA devices, Central Intelligence Agencies, and a few other three-letter agencies that you, know, you probably haven't heard of, but those two you have. Yeah. NSA, they, the joke is it's called such agency. The National Security Agency, they call it NSA for no such agency because that's secret. And what they do is they hang out, and their job is just you know signal acquisition. And they just grab whole bunches of things, and they sit, they have listening posts around the world, where they just grab electronic communications, and then they do other things which are a whole lot more nefarious, um, like you know going into undersea cables and reading all of the data off of undersea cables. And then if you guys had followed um, any of that information, 
from uh, that NSA contractor that released all that privacy stuff. Anybody remember him? The NSA contractor that's presently still living in Russia? Snowden. Yeah, that's him. Right. Snowden's sitting in Russia right there because he blew, blew the lid on a lot of the stuff that they were doing spying on Americans. And amongst the things they were doing is they'd gotten in with uh, the telecom companies on their big hubs and they were just sucking every last bit coming off the big subs and pretty much catching everything going through on the internet and storing in these huge servers and then processing on it. And that needed big machines. It's always needed big machines. It needed big machines, the very biggest machines available back in the 90s. And so I wasn't like a spook type person. I wasn't like a spy type person. But I was somebody that they could they could take advantage of because I had big problems is just as part of my research. And so I was having to do at the time, I was having to do billions of operations out in 73 dimensional space. And so, yeah, that would put these machines through their paces. And so they paid grants for people like me to work their machines that they were developing and research. And so I was working with the Krays and the Cray 2s and the best machines available at the time, which are generally um, pretty much right along the lines with their throughput with the laptop I'm talking to you on now. Okay? And the big, not, not big scale computing devices now, and the big, big computing devices now, are more along the lines of like many, many generations higher than that. If anybody can remember your very first DOS machine compared to what we have now, that's the difference between the large scale computers and the other. But again, this all goes back to things get processed as actual transistors on a chip and then the hardware and architecture things that turns this into code that runs on your computer. And then the actual transistors in the chip reflect back in assembly language. The assembly language is just ands and ors and nots. Okay? And then you have higher level languages which get translated to that. And the higher level languages have compiler programs that run. The input is your program in your higher level language, and the output is a program in assembler language, which then maps one-to-one -one with actual machine instructions, which maps one-to-one -one with, you know, uh, uh, segments of transistors on a computer chip. Okay, so this is very, very fundamental to any for everything in computer science. And so now we have a truth table. Back again, how many of you guys have worked with truth, ta truth tables before? Anybody here worked with the truth table? Nobody's worked with the truth table. Is that a big no from everybody? Nobody's worked with the truth table before? Is that a no, no from everybody? Briefly, so you've heard of it, but you never worked with it. So here's how truth tables work. Okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to look at every possible, and we're going to look exhaustively at every possible value or combination of values for the variables that I'm plugging in. So I'm looking at just B right now, right? And the structure that I just gave you was, was canonical. People always work with that. I mean, it's not really like counting zero, one. You actually count one zero. But, you know, the, va the variable B can have two values, true and false, right? The vari variable B can have true, true or false values, yes? Everybody, that should be clear, right? I just kind of cut it back to just true and false, right? Now, here's how you do this. So if I'm looking with a Boolean algebra with just one element, it can only have two elements. It can only have two values, true and false. There's actually have a Boolean algebra with zero elements. It can only have the value true. <laughs> but let's start off with a Boolean algebra with just one element, B, one variable, and it can only have true or false. And if you check on true and false on all of these right there, you'll get values coming out. Okay where A can only has to be the same thing as B. But now if I only have two variables, well, B can be true or false, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna define the values, all the possible values for A and B combined by just starting off the values for true and false on B, okay? Now, if B is true or false, with B being true or false, we get two more possibilities corresponding to whether A is true whether A is true 
or A is false. So you duplicate the values for B, and then on the aside, you will let that be true and false. Yeah? And then just a little bit right here on the next page, when I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the distributive loss, we will move that to a third variable, which can then be true or false, where we duplicate those four values previously. And this is canonical. So it, it's a recursive structure where you come up with all the possible values for the variables. And every time you add another variable, you double the number of possibilities. You double the number of possibilities from two, four to eight, and you can double the number of possibilities from two to four. Okay, and that's what I showed you before, right? As we went from one to the other. But now we have two variables and there's going to be four possibilities for the values, either true and true, true and false, false and true, or false and false. And these are all the possible inputs that you can put into these operations. And so we're gonna check exhaustively across all the possible states of the variables on the Boolean algebra. Okay, so we're going to go one line at a time and then one column at a time, evaluating each of these pieces. Now, what I'm doing here on this one is I'm going to, and this is just in the way, so I'm going to clean this because I'm hopefully you just remember this now. Okay, yeah. And now let me get myself framed nicely. And these are the De Morgan's laws. We're going to take a look at that first law, okay? We're going to look at that first law right now, okay? And they're both the same laws, but I'm going to show them both separately just as an exercise, okay? So we're going to look at number one for the left-hand side, okay? And so for the left-hand side on number one, yeah, for number one on the left-hand side, we're going to take a look and we're going to assemble this expression one piece at a time from the inside out. From the inside, the most inside thing is just the variables A and B. Then the next thing I see is A plus B, and I'm going to evaluate that. And the next thing, in order to create the entire left-hand side, I'll take that A plus B, and I'll knot it. Okay, so we're going to get evaluate each of these in turn until we're on the side. In some sense, I could do it all at once, but the standard is we take it apart piece by piece with one operation at a time, pushing together into new columns to make that happen. Now, I'm waiting for Jose to come back and join us here because I'm missing Jose, okay? And I'm temporizing while Jose uh, gets back into the, into, uh, the chat and the client session. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take a look one more time at why my laptop isn't charging. Okay. And I'm going to unplug. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Oh, well, that would make a difference. I was checking the connection on my tablet instead of the connection on my laptop. And hopefully if I pull that in and out and check those connections and those connections... Okay, and Ramsey, um, some people joined him back again, but it's still not charging. Let me just flip the sides on that. Or maybe I'll just grab my other... Is this one? I don't know. Let me try this one. Okay, I don't know why that would be happening, but this one looks better. Let me try this one. I'm going to swap over cables. I've got separate cables. And because I'm relying on this thing all the time, I should probably get backups on this just to make sure that everything's going to work on me. I need to have separate cables, and that one's not charging still. Well, 48%, I just got to fix this before we have, probably just needs, uh, connections need cleaning, and I'll do that in a little bit right here. And if not, well, then I'll worry about that for tomorrow morning. So here we go, guys. We're going to we're gonna evaluate these now, okay? thing to remember is that plus means or, times means and, and not means not. That's the easy one, okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and start filling in this truth table. One row at a time. 
across a single column at a time. So I'm going to look at the A plus B column, and I'm going to start filling this in with your help. What's true or true? I'm looking at or, A and B, A is B here right there. What's true or true? You tell me. Folks, what's true or true? True, very good. What's true or false? True or false? True or false? What's that? That's also true, as long as either one of them is true, right? And then there's the symmetric one where I can say false or true, right? How about false or false? What's the value of that? There you go. False or false is false. So you get true, 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 false as the truth table for or. Now let's not these. Let's do the not on these, okay? I'm going to take that A plus B and we're going to not it. So what's not true? Not true is false. False, false, what's not false? True. And this is the value. This right now is the value for A plus B not. Okay? So let's do that on the right-hand side. And the right-hand side, on the right-hand side here on this first of De Morgan's laws, we see A not and B not. Yes? A not and B not. Yes? And we're going to take these one operation at a time. We're going to do A not. We're going to do B not. A naught, then B naught, and then the and of A naught and B naught. A naught, B naught, and of A naught and B naught. And now, you'll get used to doing these really fast because you'll see it right there because it's always the same thing. It's true, 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 false, which then gets duplicated, true, false, and the first pair get true, and the second pair get false, and eventually you'll just start writing those as true, 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 false, false, true, false, false, because that's the, uh, that's the exhaustive list of variable pairs, variable value pairs for A and B in this Boolean algebra with two elements. Okay, so let's do this. Now, what's I'm looking at A and B, and now I'm looking for A naught. That's a column. B naught. That's a column. And A naught and B naught, which is a column. So, what's A naught when A is true? Somebody tell me. False, yes, and that's going to be true both times A is true. And what's A naught when A is false is true, okay? I'm probably going a little bit slower than you need me to, but I want to make sure that we're clear on this, okay? Now tell me about B naught, guys. Just tell me the whole column. You should be able to read it off, right? Let's not the whole column. True, false, true, yes? False, true, false, true. Yeah, Candace got it. So there you go, false, true. False, true, and now we're ready to and, yes? Now we're ready to and. And so I'm going to ask what is false and false for the first row. False, false and true. False and true. Also false, yes? Yes. In order for something, an and to be true, both arguments must be true. If both arguments aren't true, the and is not true. Okay? And associated with the sets, where you say, is something an element of the intersection? In order to be an element of the intersection, you must be an element of the first set, and you must be an element of the second set. Because if you're only an element of the one set, you're not going to be, and not an element of the other, well, then you're not going to be in the intersection. And so you can always map these directly back to set theory. Okay, but true and false is also false. It's just symmetric because uh, ands and nots, the pluses and times, the intersections and unions that they all come from, all of those are, are uh, 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 commutative. And only this one will be true. Okay, so you see the truth values. The truth column for A naught, B naught, it's false, 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 true, according to this canonical ordering on the variable pairs, okay? False, 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 true, okay? Let me back up a little bit now. Let me back up a little bit now so you can see the final column of the last expression. At this point, do you see that the final columns are agreeing? Do you see the final columns are agreeing? Do you see that this column... A plus B naught agrees with this column, A naught and B naught. And at this point, we've used the truth tables to show that these two operations, A plus B naught equals A naught B naught. 
by going through an exhaustive list of values for A and B, constructing the truth tables one piece at a time, one operation at a time, and at that point, and just checking the column for the truth tables. So, some heavy concepts right there, but not that difficult when you take it one piece at a time. And at this point right there, everybody should be like, you know, oh yeah, so that worked, cool. All right. And now as a exercise, we're gonna try the second. We're gonna try the second one, okay? Now the cool thing about the second one, well actually not, okay? I want you to notice on the second one, you might think that this is what we just calculated, but it's not. This was and first, then not. This was not first, then and. Okay? So let me do that right there. This is not what we just calculated. Do you see this? This is what we just calculated on the right-hand side. Not first, not first, then and. And this is and first, then not. You see the difference? Okay, you have to be careful on that. So let's go ahead and calculate now the left-hand side for number two. So here we go. I'm going to start with number two. Here we go. I want to start with number two, and we're going to look at the left-hand side. Right? And we're going to start off with the actual variable values, and then we're going to kind of like construct. We're going to construct. Sorry, guys. I, I This thing's just uh, didn't want to work with me here a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now it is. And we're going to construct that final expression one piece at a time, one operation at a time, starting with the two values for A and B. Okay? And then, yeah, so let me get framed again slightly better so that I can see those. There we are. And now, so we're going to work with this at a time, one at a time. Let me cross a bar in here to separate the values from the expressions. And I want to construct the left-hand side, A and B, not. And so for this one, it's just going to be two operations. Okay. I'm going to need A and B. A and B. And then we'll do A and B not. Okay. With those canonical values for the truth tables, where B takes on the values true and false. And it does so twice in the same order. While A takes on the values true and then false. And let me clean that up a little bit. True, false, true, false. There we go. So it's true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. So now, guys, let's let's kind of rock through this, okay? What's true and true from the first from the first row? What's true and true from the first row? Okay. True and true is true. True and false. True and false. False, yes. And because this is commutative, false and true is the same. Then false and false is also, yes. So there's the truth table. The truth table for A and B. But now let's do the not. Okay, let's do the not. What's the not on this, guys? What's true not? True not. False, yes. So I go A and B and then A and B not. True not is false. And then the rest of these are true, yes? So we have constructed the truth table for the left-hand side. And now we need to do it for the right-hand side as well. Let's do that for the right-hand side as well. Okay. We do that for the right-hand side here on, on equation two. The right-hand side on equation two. And then compare those final columns again, okay? Okay. Now constructing on this one, I need A naught. Wait, I need just a little bit more space so you can see the expression that we have up on the right. Yeah. Don't want that cut off. Okay. There we go. Now you can see the full expression on the top. Okay. Now we've done that on the left, and we want to do this on the right hand side. And so now I'm ready to do that. Okay. So we're going to construct A not or B not one piece at a time. 
So first of all, I need A naught. Then I'm going to need B naught. And then I'm going to need, that's one operation at a time. And then I'm going to need A naught or B naught. Okay? One expression naught, one expression naught and then the or of those two expressions. And again, I'm going to fill in the trues and false in that nice little little uh, recursive way that I did before. Though, of course, you will eventually decide that I'll just write true, false, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Okay? And now let's go ahead one at a time, okay? I'm going to do not on the first column. What's not on the first column? Give me all four, please not on the first column, and I'm going to set this up so you're just looking at this little piece now, okay? What's not on the first column? And let me get that out of the way so we just see our table. There we go. Right? So that way, so we just see our table and nothing else. Everything else is out of the distraction. Okay, here. Now, not on the first column, please. False, false, true, true. Very good. False, false, true, True. Give me the not on the second column. False, true, false, true. Thank you, Candace. False, true. False, true. False, true. Okay, I'm recording. Everything's good. And now let's do the or on this, guys. Let's do the or on those two columns. Remember, it's or is true if either one or both is true. Okay, and otherwise it's false. So it's a very restricted view on what can make false on or, okay? So, false or false, false or false, neither of them is, so that's false, what, yeah, so that's false. Okay, now one piece at a time, okay? Candace, that wasn't right. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, or is true if either one of them is true, or is the union. If I'm looking at a particular element, I'm asking if it's in the union of a, of a if it's in the union of two sets, if it's in one set or it's in the other set, then it's in the union. And or is like union, okay? When we map it back to set theory. So if I could ask this, I've got an element, it's not in the first set, but it is in the second set. Is it in the union of the two sets? When I push those two two sets together, mm -hmm. is it? Yes, though that's right there. That's the or that you work with. So false or true is going to be true. Okay, and now this is commutative. So false or true is the same thing as true or false, right? And lastly, true or true, if it's in both sets, it's also in the union of the two sets. So there we go, okay? So there's the truth table that we get from A naught or B naught. Yes? Sweet, cool? Everybody there? Yeah? Okay, and now once again, we do the same thing that I just did previously comparing those last two columns on the left-hand side and the right-hand side to see what's going on with that, okay? Now, let's look at the last, the full column, on not or be not, false, true, true, true. Is that the same as the last column on A and B, not? Same column? You everybody seen the same column? Yeah, that's right. You got that, Candice? That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah? Okay. And so we've used a truth table this time to show this expression, A and B, that expression, that, that quantity not, is the same thing as A not or B not. Okay? And so there we have just proven De Morgan's laws for a Boolean algebra. Okay? And we did it by exhaustively checking all the possibilities for the values of A and B. Okay? Now... I want you to notice something. This is the way that programmers and people that do Boolean algebra think of it. Everything gets knotted, okay? Yeah. So we start off right here. See the A? That turns to A naught. See the plus? Well, the not on plus becomes times. And see the B? The not on B becomes B naught. See, like that. You see it? Okay. On Yeah, that's right. It's the properties of and, or, and not... And I said, okay, and for those, right, usually the best thing, this is why we do sets first in order to happen right there, is you think of these as just, well, let me go ahead and just, just ask yourself, okay, let me, let me kind of do that on the side here, and I'll do this on the side as a little NB. But first I want to just finish this a little bit. I'm getting back to that right, question. Are being crazy? Say again, Jesus? 
Is this your, your did you actually yeah, just drop the mic? Yeah, hey, Zeus, you bump the mic. We're hearing you. Okay, I'm going to turn off the mic. Look like this. This, this Trump's eyes. You know when Trump's eyes, he looks so tired. Okay, I had to mute his mic. Okay, there you go. And now, yeah. And now... I could do that right there, and it just it'll just cause him to he'll just have to re, redo his mic again, because I think he bumped his mic as somebody came in the room for him, and that was getting us in the way. Okay, there we go. And so when we're thinking about this, you're just kind of working it right there. A not or not is an and. B not is B. Okay, here is a not is a not, and not is plus, or and B not is B. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the and right there, and hopefully I'm going to do this in sense of. Uh, in this kind of sense that I'm going to do it with a couple of Venn diagrams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, Zeus, can you hear me? I think you bumped your mic when you when somebody came in the room with you and we were hearing your conversation. You might want to turn off your mic for now if you've got other people there, okay? Yeah, go ahead and turn off your mic for now, hey, Zeus, so that we're not necessarily hearing everybody else, okay? Yeah, I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody again. Okay, there we go. Oh, thanks for turning that off, Jesus. We're good. We're good now. Okay, so I'm gonna unmute all, and there we go. And when I mute these, all that all that does is it knocks you out for a minute, and you can just um, rejoin on that because I'm not sure how that works. It should have just killed all the mics. And now I had a request from Zach for us to go over or and and or and all that, and I'm gonna use the, use a Venn diagram to get there. Okay. I'm going to use a Venn diagram to get that so you can see it because all this maps back to set theory. Okay, because we're going to do that before we do the distributive laws, which apply just as well. The distributive laws, which apply just okay. as truly. Yeah. Which apply just as, just as truly for these Boolean algebras as they do for their isomorphic images in the set of power sets of a set. A little finite set. Okay, um, where I'm looking for, there was I'm looking for. Okay, there we go. So here we go. Oops. Undo. I want to erase. Here we go. All right. And so here we go. So let me start off with a with a Venn diagram, okay? Or at least part of a Venn diagram. Okay. Okay, that's going to bug me because I'm kind of anal. Let me just go ahead and uh, came up with a really pretty Venn diagram. That's going to be a perfect one, okay? Let me do it again. There we go. So there's a Venn diagram. Everybody see the Venn diagram? So this is my sets A and B. It's going to map back to the variables A and B. Okay. Right? And I'm going to have three values in here, okay? I'm going to put three things in here, okay? I'm going to put X, Y, and Z in here so we can see it, okay? Here. Here's going to be the value X. And Y is here in the intersection of A and B, yes? And Z is in B, but it's not in A. Okay, yeah, right. And no, I guess I gotta like change those because I want to use X in my presentation here. Okay, and uh, let's do this. Let's call them um, element one, element two, and element three. Here we go. Now. <laughs> or is equivalent to union, okay? X in A or <laughs> X in B, okay? Right. <laughs> and so let's take a look. 
<coughs> on E1, E2, and E3, okay? <coughs> is E1 in is E1 in A? Is E1 in A? Is E1 in A, anybody? Okay, let me just move that so it's a little bit better. There we go. Is E1 in A? So true. Is E1 in B? Is E1 in B? <coughs> False. Is E1 in A union B? Is E1 in the union of A and B? <laughs> Let me do it like this so we can see it. Let me do a little highlight action. Okay, so this is going to be highlighting with this color. So here's A. Okay. And here is B. Okay. And here is the intersection. So it doesn't work exactly perfectly, but I hope you'll be able to see it, okay? Yeah. And the answer is... Yes. Okay. So this is right here is equivalent to this is A plus B. Here's A, here is B, here's A plus B. All right? Yeah. And let's check this at E2. Okay. Is E2 an A? Is E2 an A? Yeah. Am I still talking? Yeah, I still talk. Is E2 an A? Somebody else answered. Yes. Okay, there we go. True. Okay. Is E2 in B? <laughs> Is E2 in B? <laughs> yes. Okay. Is E2 in A union B? Yes. Yeah, okay. See that? Zach, is this helping out? So I'm seeing the truth values. Yeah, okay. Right, and E3. Is E3 an A? Is E3 an A? No. I need especially answers from Zach because it was his question, okay? Zach, is E2 in B? Is E2 in B? <laughs> is E2 in B? No. Yes. Okay, is E2 in the union of A and B? So this is working for you, right? And I'm going to toss in a fourth element, because I can. E4. Okay. Is E4 an A? Zach, is E4 an A? No. Is E4 an B? Is it in the union of A and B? No. And there's the truth table for A plus B. And it associates directly with the OR <laughs> that's that's uh, that we think of as 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 constituting the plus in unions or the union set union for sets or the OR of logic. Or the plus, which is which is just translates now to to uh, operation notation as the plus of of uh, Boolean algebra. Okay, I can do the same thing with and, and I'm actually going to do that for you now because we got a little bit of time. Okay, we got a little bit of time. Okay, and I'm probably I'm pro I might set up as an assignment to you guys to do the last of it, but I think we'll have enough time to do one of the distributed laws, and I think I'll set up an assignment on the other one. 
Okay. Or homework, maybe. Okay. So here's the times. And times associates with intersection. Okay, let me get as much of this as I can over here. Okay. And it's A and B. I want to make sure that's in there. Okay, there we go. Okay. And this is this is true when X is in A and X is in B. And if those, both those are true, that's the definition of what it means to be in the intersection. X in A intersect B. Put that arrow over here so we're nice and symmetric, right? Okay. Now let's do that for E1, E2, and E3, okay? E1, E2, E3, and E4, okay? Now, now Zach, is E1 an A? Is E1 an A? Is E2 an A? Is E3 an A? Is E4 an A? Those four questions, okay? Is E1 an A? Is E1 an A? Give me the four as, as one. Is E1 an A true? Is E2 an A? Is E2 an A? This shouldn't change because we just do we just did that, right? So what you're seeing right here is exactly, well, it's kind of a little bit backwards, but pretty close. Those are the four possibilities for, it's not in the standard true, 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 false, false, true, false, false, but it covers them all. Okay. And now let's ask, is E1 in the intersection? Is it in both of them? As a matter of fact, only one of these in, is in the intersection, right? Tell me which one is in the intersection, Zach. Which one of these elements is in the intersection? E2. And everything else is false, yes? And so you see, true and false is false. True and true. Does this work for you? Does this work for you now? Does this make sense? So we have the top. So that works, right? Yeah, okay, that's cool. That's cool. And that was a nice little addition. Thanks for asking. And that's exactly, this is exactly the intersection I was talking about before class started. This is the kind of interaction right there, which informs me on how I want to present this next next fall. I know you're like, oh, you don't want to, and it's kind of tough for students to think like a professor, but this is a pilot. And this, and so you can see a little bit right there, how we're going to work together to create my class in the fall so that things work out better. Okay. There we go. So now, with all that done, let's look at distributive laws. Okay, the first thing we're going to do on the distributive laws is we're going to write them both backwards, okay? I'm going to write these backwards. First of all, here's the distributive law that you're used to seeing, right? A times B plus C equals AB plus AC. Everybody should recognize this distributive law, yes? Where you distribute A across the multiplication across a addition, right? But here we're using a different sense of a multiplication and a different sense of addition. Here our multiplication is and, and our addition is or. And what we find here is that when we go from numbers and multiplication and addition to a Boolean algebra with ands and ors or sets with intersection and union, we get the same law structure. It's A times B plus C equals AB plus AC, and just change the names of the variables. Okay? Now, you saw how I did that, right? Let's change this. Do you see the times right here? Do you see the times right there? Do you see the times right there? Everybody should see that, right? We'll make it a plus. See it? So I'm going to look at the dual version of this. The dual version, the dual version is going to look exactly the same with the variables, but the operations will swap. Okay? And now here's the fun part, right? So this is going to be A plus B. A 
A plus B times A plus C. And we'll put the parentheses around so you can make it work. But then I'm going to do something really mean. I'm going to lose the parentheses over here. Oh. And that's going to look really uncomfortable to you. That's going to look really uncomfortable to you. I know I lost Winter there. Okay, I'm going to see if she doesn't rejoin in just a moment. And then we'll kind of go from there, okay? Yeah. Hmm, God, I hope Best Buy is open because I'm going to have 3.1. Um, that's not in 3.1. That's in 3.2, and 3.2 is, is missing, right? Or is that in 3.1? Let me check real quickly. And if it's not, you're not going to be able to do it, right? Let me check the assignment again, okay? Because I might be confused because I was doing these modifications this morning, right? Is that in 6.5.3 or 6.4.3? Is that in there? Okay, well, I'm just going to have to figure it out, okay? <clears throat> so I don't know if that's in there or not. That's in ADS 6.5.3. Okay, well, guys, get as much of that as you can done, okay? And then we'll, we'll make sure that by the end of the term that all these things have been completed, okay? Because I'm just pushing this stuff together a little bit here and around, and then kind of, yeah. So there's going to be a little one step, two steps forward, one step back stuff, okay? There we go, okay? So now there we are, and you see these things happening now, right? And hopefully you see the and winter's back in, yeah? So you see the times are turning to plus, right? And the one that really gets you here is that, yeah, let me put those parentheses back in. And that's the one that's just weird. You're just stringing addition across multiplication. And that's going to feel just really weird to my students the first time anyone de deals with Boolean algebras. That's like, oh, my God, because it looks so different. It looks so different to uh, distribute addition across multiplication, but it really is the same thing. Okay, so... Here we go, and I've got about 10 minutes left here, and my, and my, whoa, my battery's just going, and I just hope Best Buy is open, because I'm actually going to have to go out of my house and put on the, oh, you, yeah, in the mail yesterday, I got masks, I got masks from my sister-in-law, my brothers, from my brother's wife, in my mail yesterday, so I'm going to be able to sport these things out. This is going to be cool. So that's going to make going out feel a little bit better to me. All right. So there we go. Because that one's really cute. And so now I'm going to run these again. These operations with A, B, and C. Okay. And we're going to prove uh, the first rule. Okay. And left side, right side. And I am thinking we're going to leave the second rule to you as a homework assignment which will show up eventually, okay? But I'm going to leave proving the second rule, the one that's so weird, to you as a homework assignment. And now, just that you are, so let me go ahead and just start plugging values in here, right? Now, this time I'm going to create the table of values for C as true or false, right? And then it can have true or false again as B takes on the values true or false. Okay, and now I need to double again. Every time you add another variable, you get a double. So you see the C column right now? What's C column? What's in the C column right now? What's in the C column right now? Tell me, somebody, read this, because we're building this recursively. Somebody tell me what's in the C column right now. Type it in, please. True, false, true, false. Thanks. So I'm going to do that again. True, false, true, false pairing with what's already in the B column. What's in the B column right now? True, true, false, false, right? And I bet you can guess what I'm going to put into the A column now, right? I bet you can guess what I'm going to put in the A column. Yeah? And what's going to go into the A column is the first four is going to be true. 
in the second floor going to be false. True, 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 false, 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 false. And this is the standard ordering for um, a, uh, a truth table in a Boolean algebra. And I hope you see that this one reduces, this reduces to the two by two. Okay, this reduces to the two by two. Yeah, and the two by two reduces to one by one. Not for, for the two variable case, and that reduces to the one by one case. Okay, yeah. All right, so there we are. So now we're ready to build out that first up first, first left hand side. Okay. And so the first thing I need here, <clears throat> one operation at a time, I need B plus C. That's the most inside thing I'm seeing. B plus C. Okay. And once I have B plus C, I can do A and B plus C. Because I'll have an A column and a B plus C column to work with. And that is going to finish my left hand side. Okay? There we are. So, ready, guys? Let's do B plus C. B plus C, the first four, please. Because that's standard. What's B plus C? And you get used to that, guys. It's true, 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 false. B plus C. Just this first part right here. True, 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 false. And you'll get used to that. B plus C is true, 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 false in the standard order. And the thing is, once I've done it because it's duplicated, I just can fill it in for the next half. True, 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 false. Now, here's the one that's a little bit more difficult because you got to take this column that you just calculated and you do the and on this one with the very first column. With the very first column, you want to do and of the B plus C with this one here. Okay, so it can be true and true, true and true, true, true and false. And Candace gets it, and Jem gets it. So it's gonna be true, 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 false. Yes, true, 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 false. And now let's do it again on the on the bottom half. False and true. False and true, false and true, false and false. What's that? You think your mic turned off? Your mic turned off. You mean your speakers, right? If you can't hear me, Jose. Yeah. yeah. You mean your speakers, Jose? Yeah. I want the last four in the A times B plus C column. You're on your phone? Well, dial back in. Just cut out, cut out. Drop out. Drop out and come back in. Drop out and come back in. Jose. Okay, okay, he's he's following my instructions, <clears throat> but everybody sees false, 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 because false and anything is false. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so I got the first one is false. There it is, right? Okay, so let's do the right hand side now. Okay, do the right hand side. We're almost we're almost out of time. But we can do the right-hand side in order to show the first distributive law, okay? Okay, and so let me do this. A, B, C, and let's construct this. On the right-hand side, I see A, B, or A, C. I need A, B, A, C, 
and lastly AB or AC. And that's one operation at a time. An and, the other and, and then the or. Okay. So we finished the left hand side, the right, the left hand side of the first version of the distributive laws. Okay. <clears throat> and now we can do the next one. Okay. And hopefully with a little bit more alacrity. I'm going to fill in the table. True, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, 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 true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, false, false, false. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to split these up kind of like in this spot right there so you can see where I split them off right there. And the first thing I want is A and B, guys. So let's look right now, A and B. A and B, guys. Okay, so it's the end of these two columns. True, 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 false, false, false. True, true, false, false, yes? True, true, false, false. And the next A and B, the next A and B has A is false, yes? A is false in the next four, right? So everything's false, yes? And on top of that, that's going to happen again when we look at A and C. Yes? And so now let's look at A and C again. A and C, first and third, okay? True and true, true and false, true and true, true and false. What do we get? True, false, true, true, I think. False, true, false. A. Now, remember, we look at A and C now. A and C. A and C. True and true. True and false. True and true. True and false. It's the same thing twice. True and true is true. True and false is false. True, false, true, false. True, false, but then twice, right? Okay. And now we want to do the or. Now we want to do the or, guys. And the or, for the or, it's going to be true unless they're both false. Right? It's going to be true. Yeah, that's that's true. That, that's exactly it. But here I see, like, yeah, it's going to be true unless they're both false. And you check this, and it's, well, one of them is true. Okay? True and true, true and false, false and true, false. And everything else has nothing but falses. Yes? Right? True, true, false, 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 false. Okay. Let me draw my last line here. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to go a couple minutes over because we have things, but there we are. Because I want to just finish this last little bit so we can finish this subject. Okay. And once again, I want you to look at the last columns on A and B or C, and the column with A, B, or A, C, yes? And I hope you can read this off, yes? You're seeing true, 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 falses, true, 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 falses. And at that point, we have proven the distributive law, the first distributive law, okay? Now, I want to point out that in more general practices, when things aren't commutative, there's a left-hand distributive law and a right-hand distributive law that you would have to calculate, that you would have to calculate separately. Because all these operations are distributive, we don't have to do that. Or it's just immediate, okay? But this is a left-hand, we just did a left-hand distributive, distributing from the left, but you can also distribute it from the right. And when you do that, you're doing it because it's not commutative, you say B and A and C and A, or C and A, and you keep the same order, B then A, C then A, when you're doing that. And if we want to do that, we could translate that again directly into set theory. And just translate this into set theory, what you do is you just change your atoms, your elements, right? So over here, you can see I had elements of the Boolean algebra, B, C, and A. Okay, 
And from those, I can translate over to sets, B, C, and A. Change my plus to union, my times to intersection, and then just write the laws. And it translates directly. These are isomorphic as discrete structures. And I will talk more about what it means for structures to be isomorphic once we've covered, once we've looked a little more closely at what it means to be isomorphic relations or functions. We'll talk about isomorphisms quite a bit more in this course. It's a really important concept. But at this point, I'm going to thank everyone for helping me out today. And um, I look forward to seeing everybody on Tuesday. The very least I want done before Tuesday is uh, the quiz for this week. Okay, and then do as much of the homework as you can. And I'll try to get feedback to you before the end of the weekend, assuming I can solve my uh, my powering up problem here. Okay? Take care, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for all your interactions today. And uh, have a safe and happy weekend.